creature behind those end of the world predictions. Ninety-seven percent of the people God will destroy. I don't don't believe in such judgment days that kept coming and going. The world did not end. We are still. But now the world has ended for Harold Camping long after he predicted it would. Predictions so wrong that he once said reporters would be thinking, I'm ready to shoot myself or go on a booze trip. He was wrong in 1994 and again when he announced the end would come May 21st, 2011. One follower spent $140,000 on ads warning of Judgment Day. That's your life savings. Uh, a good chunk of it. Documentary filmmaker followed Robert Fitzpatrick to Times Square to ring in the end of the world. It's six o'clock! And of course, nothing happened. I didn't water my plants. I didn't do the dishes before I left. I didn't expect to be going back home. And though you felt sorry for some who believed, it was hard not to mock. But this is my birthday. To put this on me is just weird. Happy Tuesday to you, Jeannie. The rapture, true believers ascending to heaven, was also mocked when it didn't happen, with photos showing clothing left behind. But if it had happened, it might have looked like this. <laughs> it was hard not to mock. But this is my birthday. If I genius to understand, we're in serious global confusion. I mean, really, we're in massive mainline ecological chaos. Anyway, it's happening even as we speak. Except it's absolutely true. All of it. We've been on Mars since 62. It was May 22nd. That's a very important day for you to remember, pal. Yeah, it's my birthday. Right. If it had happened, it might have looked like this. I know, but we can get closer. May 22nd, 2011. Listen to it! One of the most destructive tornadoes in American history cuts a one and a half kilometer wide swath through Joplin, Missouri. Is the deadliest U.S. tornado in more than half a century. Oh, these poor people. And the costliest ever. This is my daughter's room. Is this for real? This is the story of the Joplin tornado, as captured by those who lived through it. There's bodies, and there's literally bodies all over this neighborhood. I'm sitting here filming this, and I know the people that I know are going to be dead. Gerald can now see the arms and legs of a multi-vortex tornado approaching. The townsfolk of Gerald can now see the arms and legs of a multi-vortex tornado approaching. An ancient Native American legend speaks of the dead man walking. If you see him in a tornado, you are about to die. The townsfolk of Gerald can now see the arms and legs of a multi-vortex tornado.
He wants but she has big multi vortex. I see and see and see and see for getting closer, for getting get closer, and get closer, and get closer. Flash, we're done. Wait, stop, 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 Because when they asked him, Master, would you teach us how to pray? He said, yes, pray on this wise. These men and women in this country right now are the men and women of God. Yeah. The president. And so I'm afraid that on his return, we might be some of those saying, Lord, Lord. And he will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I know you not. I don't, I don't want to be in that shape. I'm literally terrified of the Christ. <clears throat> because he intends to destroy this world. He don't come back <clears throat> with an olive branch. Isaiah the prophet saw him coming, treading the wine press alone. Oh, minister. And have you ever seen a wine press? In the old days, it was a big, huge vat where they put the grapes in it. Yeah. Yes, sir. And you'd wash your feet and wash your legs and you would get in and, yeah. and tread yeah. the grapes down until yeah. your garment was red yeah. with the juice of the grape. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They saw him coming, treading the wine press alone, treading the wicked down yeah. under his foot. She's a great country, the greatest on earth, but she's not righteous. And she's not righteous because there are no preachers that will condemn her evil without fear. How can you be of Jesus Christ and afraid to speak his word? How can you be of Jesus Christ? and refuse yes, to stand up for his righteousness oh, and let everything and anything go on in the house of God and you wink your eye as though you saw nothing. He's actually just sucked through the sunroof of an SUV. He was in the car with his dad. His dad's been in the hospital recovering. Uh, he was on his way home from his high school graduation. He vanished, turned up the local hospital, then was transferred no one knows uh, exactly where uh, his the sirens are actually now going off uh, here. Um, again, uh, there's been concern all day about an approaching storm. His family went to one hospital. Will Norton's family went to one hospital after hearing of a patient there who, uh, who matched Will's description. It was not him, we're told. We spoke with the family last night. Tracy Pressler, Will's aunt, joins me now on the phone tonight. Tracy, you're indoors, correct? Sure, and I know this isn't the kind of video I normally do, um, but I just wanted to give you guys an update of what's been going on in my life. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the story about Will Norton, Will the Beast, and the Joplin Tornadoes. Well, I'm Sarah Norton, and I'm his only sister, and, um, I just wanted to tell you what I've been going through these past two and a half weeks, I guess it's been now, since the tornado, and I'm just going to try to tell you 
the whole story from my perspective. Um, as you can see, I'm in Will's room right now. Um, it's kind of hard to come in here. It's kind of weird uh, because he's not here anymore. Um, also, if you've heard the story, you know that. Uh, Will went up to heaven on May 22nd at around 5.30 p.m. when the tornado struck. Um, my dad was with him, and he is alive, thank goodness, and he's fine. He finally got to come home after two weeks. So, um, I'm just going to try to tell you the story from the very beginning, um, from my perspective, and then I'll fill in what needs to be filled in from my dad's perspective. Please watch the upper left corner of the screen, and you will see a spirit orb enter the scene. My dad was with him, and he is alive, thank goodness, and he's fine. He finally got to come home after two weeks. So, um, I'm just going to try to tell you the story from the very beginning, um, from my perspective. Um, I'm just going to try to tell you the story from the very beginning. 22nd, we were getting ready for graduation, and so uh, Will just came downstairs, you know, like a normal day, and said, hey, all right, I don't have to be there for a little bit, but you guys should go on and get our seats safe. So we said, okay, all right, see you later, love you. And um, that's actually the last time I saw him that close. Um, and so then we just left and we went to graduation. So we got there and we saved our seats. It's a huge graduation, like 450 kids graduated. And so uh, it took a little while, and then afterwards we were supposed to meet Will outside. Uh, to take his picture, get close-ups and all that, because it's hard to get close-ups with all those kids graduating and they just go through the stage really fast. My mom's across the door won't close. And so my dad could barely hear me on the phone. And we talked, and I was trying to talk to him. I said, Dad, are you there? Can you just answer me, please? Are you there? Are you there? And so um, finally, I heard him say, Will, because Will was driving my dad was in the passenger seat of his H3. And um, I finally heard my dad say, Will, pull over, pull over, pull over. And he goes, there's the tornado, pull over. And then I just heard this wind suck them up, and I could tell it was really bad. I could tell it wasn't just outside the car somewhere. I could tell that they were getting blown up in the tornado. They were getting sucked up, and I could hear glass and everything. And then finally the phone went dead, and I was kept saying, Dad, can you hear me? Just tell me you're okay. I love you. Can you hear me? And so then um, the phone went dead. And so my mom and Whitney and I are just sitting at home, and we're like, okay, well, what do we do? I don't know how to you know, I don't know what to do. And so all these people kept coming to our house saying, are you okay? Are you okay? And so the tornado just like barely went in front of our house. Like it barely, barely missed. Them. Maybe they didn't make it. And like half of my family, my dad and my brother, like, can you imagine half your family just being gone? Like the thing that most people don't understand about my family is that like, we're all best friends. And I'm not just saying that because it sounds good or because like my brother's gone now and I want to be his best friend. It's like, we really were best friends. Like, we would hang out on Saturday nights and hang out all the time like after, every day after school we would go to Sonic or Starbucks and get you know his favorite Sonic drink was an ocean water his favorite Starbucks drink was um, a <clears throat> grande white mocha and so we would always do that together and we would talk on the phone every day like I went to college and so we would talk on the phone we text every day and like when I came home we'd hang out all the time and we'd go on vacations together like we really were best friends like he knew more about me than any other person in the entire world and we would tell each other everything and um my mom and dad, we would always just, we'd always hang out with them and go on vacations with them. And we, we always just wanted to be together because we were all just best friends. And so, um, that was the first time that I really realized, well, maybe my two best friends, my dad and my brother are gone. Even maybe the pictures don't show it's just the, the weather that is still uh, the weather system that is still affecting this area is making it very difficult for those who are out searching for people who may still be alive trapped underneath the rubble. Uh, it is cold here. There has been a driving rain here throughout the day. Uh, th severe thunderstorms, uh, major lightning. We've seen huge lightning strikes uh, all around us over the last several hours. And the bad weather period is expected to continue uh, into tomorrow. Whoa, huge uh, bolts of lightning uh, just there. I don't know if you saw any of them behind me. Yeah, huge uh, bolts of lightning uh, just there. I don't know if you saw any of them behind me. Yeah, um, that's, I mean, you can imagine, A, what this does. Well, you know, when I look at it, it's terrifying. You get right up next to these tornadoes. How does it feel? Oh, get, get something where they can get out. I don't, Hello? Hello? No, it's I busy. Know? It's a fast pace. There's no answer. I'll keep calling. Show me those people need help. I heard them screaming, Chris! Kathy, bring the stuff. Um, there's people. Kathy, there's somebody in here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did I'm so sorry. Are the cars? Hello. 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 
Oh, give her, sweetie. Give her, honey. Give her, sweetie. It's okay. Give her, baby. I'm so... Come on, sweetie. Oh, come here, baby. Unrecognizable right now. You actually have a tough time, or I can say I have a tough time getting my bearings in certain places, even though I should know exactly where I am. Um, I have, again, I'm from the South, from Arkansas, worked in Arkansas. I've been covering tornadoes a long time, and it seems it seems cliche, Pierce, but you've never seen anything like this in your life. We wanted to find that out. So we found the morgue after some investigating, and I want to show you this very strange and unusual encounter we had on a public road with law enforcement officials that felt like we were crossing an international border without a passport. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're with CNN. Okay. Right. We're trying to find out where the morgue is. Do you guys got any cameras or anything? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay, the Navy is secured in the back of your vehicle. Well, why is that? Because we have orders from our lieutenant to do that. Lieutenant to do what? To secure your cameras in the back of the vehicle. Is there secret activity going on here? You guys just can't be around here, that's all. You know, what, why? Just take your cameras. There's some private property there. Private yes. property but up this there. isn't... This if isn't you're in the middle of the road, then you're, then you're in danger to yourself. As you can see, there's a diesel behind you. I know, well, that's why I was off the road yeah. for a second it's while I was making a phone call. It's take your cameras and put them in the back of your vehicle. Okay, we just okay. want to find out about a baby no. maybe in the morgue. Is he shooting back there? Hey, take that camera and put it in the back of your car. All right, let's go. He told us, don't come back. The police officer actually opened our door. We used to be there. I mean, you can't even tell what was there on the ground. This is shit, Paul. I've never seen a scene like this before. We just rolled up and this tornado came through maybe 45 minutes ago. I've personally witnessed injuries and fatalities here, unfortunately, in Joplin. We're just going through the neighborhood here trying to figure out if anyone else needs help. There's, people are just scrambling right now. I want you to kind of take a, a scope of the... Oh, the damage is just kind of taking my breath away here. Multiple homes, businesses destroyed, cars that have been flipped, a mangled debris everywhere you look. People are trying to just help people out any way they can. People being pulled out of buildings uh, here this evening as well. We've come across many people. They need help. They need to get as much help in this area as possible. I think they're going to be overwhelmed with the amount of damage, the amount of injuries and fatalities they have here. They need help in Joplin as soon as they can possibly get it, Paul. I'm just not even sure where to begin. We're just kind of walking through the neighborhood, seeing if we can can help anybody right now it really is an extremely sobering situation here this evening oh my goodness i'm not even sure they're right now what used to be right there but that used to be oh, something wow. it's been wiped clean and oh my goodness what what was uh, that let's go down here there might be some people over there Again, Mike oh, Bettis and the Great Tornado Hunt through right on the scene after lines. the tornado went through Joplin, Missouri, checking out the damage and also trying to aid in the help of so many people. We'll be right back. A significant tornado has come through here, Paul, this evening. I haven't seen anything like this in quite some time, not since we saw the, uh, the outbreak, at least back in, in Alabama a couple, couple of weeks ago. But you can just see the expanse of the damage here. And actually, oh, my goodness. I'm going to look over here. But, oh, my God. oh, no, I hope everyone is okay. That is destroyed. Oh, my goodness. That is a stunning image right there. We're just rolling. Oh, I mean, uh, take a look. I mean, it's everything. It's just completely demolished. People just saw last month in, excuse me, in uh, Tuscaloosa. It's tough. No question about that.